Hi, my name is Tyler, and this is Aftertouch Audio. In this video, we will be going over fire spells, and we will be giving you everything you need to get started making fire spells like this at home. Before we get started, here's a quick list of every video that is included within the spell design series. But if you like this series, consider hitting the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when the next video goes live. Now, I'm going to say this up front. Sampling fire is extremely dangerous. You can easily roast equipment and get seriously burned. Fires can quickly go from zero to a hundred. So if you are going to try your hands at fire sampling, please make sure to go over this information before going out and lighting fires all willy nilly. Pouring water on a class B fire will take a small harmless fire and turn it into an extremely dangerous fire very quickly. Okay, now with all that out of the way, let's go over the components that make up a finished spell. A spell can be broken down into four main elements. The cast, the hold, the launch, and the impact. Now not all spells will have this sequence of events or have them in this order. Some spells will have two or more looping sections, some will have two or more impact sections. It all depends on the complexity of your animations. Casting. Casting is the first set of samples you hear when a spell is selected. Samples like whooshes, ignitions, oil flares, kick drums, bass drops, and explosions can yield fantastic results. Hold. You can really get as creative as you would like here. Things like sustain samples, risers, and wind make these hold sections really easy to create. When it comes to layering, make sure that you add samples that complement one another. Having just a few samples that occupy different frequency ranges is better than having dozens of samples competing for the same space on the frequency spectrum. The hold section can actually be divided into two elements, sounds that loop and sounds that don't loop. Spells that hold power until the player chooses when to launch the spell needs to have a looping section, as we don't know how long the spell is going to be held for. But spells that charge and build up power don't necessarily need to be looped if the spell launches after a predetermined amount of time. From the hold section, we can transition into one of three directions. A debuff, which happens when you overcharge a spell. A different looping section, like you're advancing in power level. Or we can transition into a launching sound effect. Launch. For a typical fireball spell, whooshes really dominate this category, as we are going to be throwing the spell away from the player. But not all spells are thrown. Some spells are AoE based, and others can be held like a flamethrower or a summoning. Impacts. Now, impacts don't necessarily mean impact. I mean, yeah, you can have a fire spell that impacts on whatever it is interacting with, but some spells are not physical spells and can apply things like buffs, heals, enchantments, debuffs, or really anything that comes after the spell is launched or when the loop comes to an end. For impacts, you can really get as creative as you would like with these sound design sections. Okay, now that we know the four elements that make up a spell, it's time to grab your microphones after reading the safety tips from before, right? Right? Okay, let's get to recording. Now, I strongly encourage any amount of experimentation when sampling. If you think it can be useful, capture it. By experimenting with what you are recording and having fun when you record it, you might end up finding some sound sources that no one has ever found before. Here is a quick list of some of my favorite samples that I use when creating fire spells. Burning fires of different materials. Chemical fire ignitions. Flame bursts. Fire ignitions. LFE rumble. Sizzling, torch whooshes of various sizes, flamethrowers, plasma, fireworks, sparklers, bubble wrap. Ice on hot surfaces. Potato chip bags. Tin foil. Synthetic textures. And fuses. If 
you can't take the heat and would like to skip the sampling process, I have linked below a few of my favorite sample libraries that will get you up and running right away. I have covered a lot of common use effects in the Magical Textures video, so this video is really going to be more focused around specific processing techniques to fire related samples. Fire really benefits from having a solid bottom end, and having a good LFE sample of a raging fire can really add some weight to your recordings, making the fire sound bigger than it actually is. Here are a few examples. Wimpy fire? Big fire. Wimpy fire? Big fire. Some of you might be familiar with this EQ. Most fire recordings that you capture will be quite mid-rangey. So to add that high-end sizzle to most of your fire samples, you'll need to power your inner Dre and use both a high and low shelf EQ with some gentle to aggressive saturation, depending on your tastes. Don't be afraid to use more extreme settings with a high shelf EQ, as a lot of the high-end energy is in your fire samples, it's just buried under all that mid-range. You can also apply some high pass filters to samples that don't need the low end so we don't overwhelm the low end in your finished spell. When working with fire whooshes, it can be really fun to use some sort of transient shaper to help create an impact or to add more intensity when the fire whips by your head. My favorite transient shaper to do this with is kilohertz as it has a sidechain feature which allows me to trigger an envelope midway through the whoosh without having to affect the rest of the sample. Here is a quick example. When we look at a string section of an orchestra, we have the violins which carry the top end melody, the violas and cellos which carries the mid and low mid range, and then we have the double bass, which fills in that low end. But the double bass also acts as the volume knob of the entire orchestra. In sound design, we are trying to achieve that exact same effect by filling out the frequency spectrum and adding some low end sweeteners to our fire impacts. Having a good low end will add that weight that most fires are missing. If you are looking for some really good sound design tools to improve your impacts, Enforcer by Boom is a fantastic tool. When it comes to synthesis, we can actually make fire samples using nothing but a synth. Hi, my name is Amrith Taika. I do apologize, I am kind of sick while recording this, but it's been over a month and I really should get this out, so... Synthetic fire sounds are not particularly easy and are generally best combined with fire fully, just because fire is such a random thing to synthesize. Magical fire is even harder just because we don't actually know what that would sound like, if anything. We just assume it would sound like a torch being swung around, or a fire burning. The intro clip is made up of four different synthesizer patches. The first one is this, it's sort of my template noise explosion patch. And it also made use of this fire charge patch. This fire loop. and this fire throw. The fire throw patch is actually fairly simple. Now, like most of the sounds you're going to see me make today, it basically makes use of various colors of noise through filters and distortion, and this patch is no different. We just have noise going through a filter with some chorus and stereo panning just to sort of fling the fire around. And then it has a second patch mixed into the first one that is the same sort of deal, but with distortion and reverb to create a sort of impact. It also has this little sine wave part in the bottom here, just to add a little extra low end. The fire loop patch is actually fairly simple as well. Same sort of deal with noise through a low pass through a few basic effects, but also has this bottom part here, which creates the sort of intro swoosh. Now the fire charge sound is sort of like a charge up of the spell itself. Again, uses low pass distorted noise, but in this case we also have snap heap over here, which is giving us the sort of stereo panning, which is sort of swirling the sound around into a phaser, which is also being modulated by the panning modulation there. The distorted noise over here, as you can see, it has very high bias that makes it sort of a crackly, crinkly sort of sound to emulate the sound of water and things exploding from logs in a fire. Doing all of this video while sitting is kind of torturous, so I really hope you learned something. I wish I could show you more patches, but I just don't have the energy, so back to you after touch.
Thanks, Averith. Check out her blog in the description below, where she teaches you how to get all kinds of sounds using nothing but synthesis. I have also seen it with Sing Wei at WoW Sounds, the creator of some of my most used magic sound effects, to break down a fire spell that they have designed. Hi, my name is Sing Wei, a sound designer from WoW Sound. In this portion of the video, I'll break down this spell redesign and show you the layers of sounds used. This fire spell can be broken into four main elements. First, the cast. When the spell starts. The loop. And when the spell ends. This layer is a mix of bushes, fire sounds processed by Tremulator from Sound Toys. I also make use of reverse synth, reverse wind chime. I like my casting sounds to sound like a buta. So that's all of them together. This layer here is a mix of fire wishes, and wind wishes, and a drop bass. I think it's nice to emphasize the start of a spell. And all the layers together. For the loop, I use two layers of fire, one of a higher frequency and the other a lower frequency. The last layer is a wind whooshing sound to give it the spinning effect. Creating a loop is really easy. Just cut the end of the clip, move it to the front and crossfade in the middle. And there you have it, a seamless loop. Works most of the time. For the last layer, I mainly used Intact Sounds layer with a fire wish. Pretty straightforward. Thanks again to Sing Hui for being a part of this video. If you would like to check out their magic sound packs, I've left them all in the description below, and they've also just launched an anime sound effects library that I have been getting a lot of use out of. Thank you for watching. The next video in the magic spell design series will be water. So if you would like to see more videos like this, consider hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to check out the Discord server as there will be a lot of cool goodies coming very soon. Now go make some noise.